Hello. Good evening. We'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for your patience. We had a little technical difficulty there. I think we're up and running now. Welcome commissioners. Welcome everybody live on Facebook. Uh, and I believe we'll have the YouTube feed recorded and posted later. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll have a call to order. Let's have a roll call. Ms. Delencia Hervey. Present. Thank you. Ms. Ray Williams. Present. Ms. Rebecca Fincher. Present. Mr. Brooks Freeman. No go. Uh, Mr. Drew Gaynor. Present. Thank you. Mr. Arthur Ingram. Present. Uh, Ms. Letitia Sanders Jones. Present. Mr. Brian Townsend. And Ms. Ann Tucker let us know she wasn't going to be here tonight. She's had a death in her family, so we'll all be praying for her and her family. All right. Uh, now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's go ahead and approve the minutes from last month's meeting, July 20th. Commissioners, any issues or amendments to those minutes from last month? Move to approve. I'll Thank say. you. I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All Aye. right. Thank you. Now I'll do a little housekeeping um, or disclaimer. The Conway Planning Commission makes recommendations to the city council on public hearing items. Items reviewed on this agenda will be considered by the city council as early as August 25th, 2020. Items not approved by the Planning Commission may be appealed to the city council within 30 days of planning denial with the exception of decisions made by Planning Commission acting as the Board of Zoning Adjustment. If an item is appealed to the city council, a public notice will be placed on the property and at conwayarkansas.gov. Now we've got that out of the way, we will jump into our first item this evening. Uh, we've got a one subdivision review. Uh, this is the request for preliminary plat extension at Northview Estates PUD. Let's see, Mr. Levi Hill. Yes, first item, <clears throat> as noted in your report, the applicant is requesting a one-year extension to phase one of the Northview Estates preliminary plat. This plan was previously approved in June of 2019. Uh, the development is currently under construction and the subdivision regulations stipulate that any approved preliminary plat shall expire within one year of approval, if not granted an extension from the Planning Commission. Uh, no changes or modifications to the approved plat are included in this request. Staff recommends approval of the request as the extension will allow sufficient time for the development to be completed. I'm happy to answer any questions. Has there been any issues with the development? I know at one point we were going back and forth with Conway Corp on the, the turnaround down there and I think you some utilities where the little chunk is taken out of the plat. Yeah, from what I understand, there's not been any real significant issues with construction, just a matter of, I think, getting, um, getting the subcontractors out there to complete the work. I understand. Okay. Um, would, do we have anybody to speak in favor of the request other than Mr. Hill? All right. Any opposition to this request? Okay, commissioners, let's bring it back in. Any conversation? Uh, I think we're good And it. I'm just reading here. It just says no changes, no modifications. Everything's still the same. It's just a basic, it's, they're just wanting an extension, right? So nothing was changed. That's correct. Just simply asking for another year to uh, complete construction. Okay. I make a motion that we that we approve the request to extend the um, approval of his 
uh, extension. Extension. Second. Thank you. I've got a, uh, a motion from Ray, a second from Rebecca. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, any abstentions? Okay, motion passes seven to zero. Thank you very much. Okay, now we'll move into our public hearings. I guess we didn't have to have public comment on that last one. Um, so item 2A of your report, we have a request for rezoning variance, reduced exterior setbacks. I'm sorry, I missed that address. Um, that's at Riley Renee Cove. We have Beth here to explain this one to us tonight. Yes, good evening. <clears throat> okay, so the property owner, or I should say the previous property owner, the property has been sold since the application has been made, but they are applying for a zoning variance uh, to reduce the exterior side set back there along Marble Drive where the garage was constructed encroaching into the side set back about two feet, two inches. It was an error that was made during construction, so it was outside the property owner's control at the time and wasn't discovered until the property was resurveyed. Um, They're just asking for about a two and a half foot reduction in that side setback. Uh, as you can see from the map, the encroaching portion of the structure is not uh, near any shared property lines. Um, and planning staff recommends approval of the variance with the one condition that no expansion or alteration be made to the structure that would further that nonconformance. Thank you, Beth. Mm -hmm. Do we have anyone else online to speak in favor of this request? Okay, seeing that there is none, no public comment, and we have anybody to speak in opposition of this request? Okay, we will bring it back into commission for discussion. Commissioners, any questions, comments? So the garage is already built? Yes. Correct. Okay. So what if we say no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is unfortunate for the, the new <laughs> homeowner, you know, that's kind of out of their control. And I think this is a, um, an exercise to kind of clean up a mistake that was made. Um, so I personally don't have any issues with the request. I would see that there, it is double frontage a lot, um, but that is the side that the driveway is on, which is not necessarily the front. It's kind of more like the side. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't think any of those lots north of this property are buildable uh, because of the slope and um, inability for Conway Corp to get water up there from what I've heard. So I don't think there's going to be more homes built behind this home. So how was this, uh, was this just discovered after, was, is this a new addition? No, there was a sell. The way Beth explained it, there was a sell. Uh, and so the, okay. the, the new home buyer uh, had the property resurveyed probably as part of their financing. Mm, um, got it. Okay. Okay. And I'm sorry. I missed that for that. Okay. So that makes sense. Okay. I'll make a motion if we're to that point that we approve it with the condition listed. Um, second. Yeah. I heard a second from, or I'm sorry, a first uh, motion from Arthur and a second from. I think it was Drew. Yes. Thank you, Drew. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you, commissioners. We'll move on to item 2B of our public hearing tonight. This is a request for rezoning from an R1 to an O1 on College Avenue. 
Yes, so this is actually a single family home that is situated between the trail and the entrance to the multifamily development there, very close to that bank there at the corner. Um, applicant is requesting to rezone from R1 to O1 uh, in order to remodel the space and lease it uh, to one tenant. Um, let's see. The comprehensive plan does indicate that the property is uh, appropriate for single family development, but that entire portion of College Avenue uh, shows the same. And if you're familiar with that area, you know that the comprehensive plan does not reflect the extent of multifamily and office and commercial development that has occurred there, uh, which makes this property really no longer attractive for single family use. Um, if, uh, if approved uh, and the project were to move forward, replatting would be required and the applicant would also be required to submit site improvement plans indicating um, how they're gonna handle access and parking and landscaping for review by planning staff before they were to uh, be issued a building permit. Um, given that planning staff does recommend approval of the rezoning as it's appropriate, uh, would allow appropriate development for the area and would not likely result in harm to adjacent properties. Great, thank you, Beth. Do we have the applicant or anybody else online to speak in favor of this request? We're, the Gordys are online. Fantastic. Do y'all have anything to add uh, in addition to what Ms. Beth has included in the report? I don't think anything additional. I mean, everything that's listed is correct and the plan moving forward. It's just to make it to make it appropriate, just in terms of it not being an eyesore anymore, really, I guess. Gotcha. But, yeah. Okay. Well, hold tight. We'll, let's see if we have any more commentary and then we might have some questions from our commissioners. Is there anybody else online to speak in favor? Okay, do we have any opposition? Very good. Okay, let's bring it back into commission for discussion. Commissioners, any questions? Any questions for Ms. Gordy? Do we know what type of office is going to occupy that space? We don't just yet. Um, we haven't really done any, I mean, we haven't really planned on advertising it for lease right now just because we obviously have a little ways to go in terms of transforming it into what it needs to be right now but um we do know that we only want one tenant um and with the 01 rezoning um i mean we have we have a friend who's an attorney and there was conversation there you know for it to be his office or a financial advisor mm -hmm. um, you know more, more so along the lines of um professional businesses okay oh yeah i mean it's there we have absolutely no plan to do um a nail salon or retail or anything like that just to make it very clear that's not at all okay thank you yeah okay any other questions commissioners i'm good with it i'll make a motion to approve thank you rebecca second we had a oh. motion from rebecca second from drew all those in favor Aye. 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 Aye as well. Any opposed? Anyone like to abstain? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Miss Gordy. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our next public hearing item. 2C, this is a request for a PUD modification for the change of use type at uh, Princeton Village. Mr. Hill. Yes. 
Item 2C is a request to modify Princeton Village BED to adjust the permitted uses on lots 28 and 29B of the Princeton Village plan. Uh, the subject properties are located at 435 and 450 Princeton Drive and are currently undeveloped. As indicated in the report, a portion of the site is located on the east side of Princeton Drive while the remaining project site is located on the west side of Princeton Drive. The applicant is requesting to modify the PUD to allow the development of five townhomes, totaling 10 residential units on the property. And this would be in lieu of the commercial uses currently permitted under the PUD. Uh, three of the townhomes would be located on lot 28, while the other two would be located on lot 29B. All five townhomes would be accessed by Princeton Drive. The anticipated traffic impact is expected to be minimal considering the proposed townhomes are expected to generate approximately 2,400 fewer average daily trips than the highest generating use currently allowed in the commercial uses of the PUD. Two public comments were received in response to the request, so I'll go ahead and read those into the record at this time. Um, a Miss Vicki Bailey wrote, the Princeton Village POA board had met and would like to request that a condition be placed on the PUD rezoning that the structures, duplexes, or townhouses be built as one story or ground level dwellings. A, uh, Mr. Keith Woosley wrote the following, most of the owners in the Princeton Village neighborhood were in agreement that the townhouses next to Princeton Village is a better alternative than a strip mall or commercial use. The, the worries are increases in traffic with cars parked in the street, types of occupants, building design concept, and increased noise. Uh, don't know if these can be included in the language of the amendment. The POA Board of Princeton Village will not oppose the amendment as long as it involves only changing the PUD to allow townhouses. And those were the only public comments that we received. Um, and it should be noted that the conditions of approval, as noted in the report, have been included uh, limiting the height of the structures to all one story uh, and also one including uh, the installation of no parking signs along Princeton Drive. Um, and there were other conditions included in the report as well uh, involving materials requirements and some other standard conditions. Uh, staff has recommended approval of the modification with the conditions as noted. The proposed use is compatible with the surrounding uses and will not represent a significant increase of intensity on the site. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, you have any immediate questions for Mr. Hill? Are we going to have someone speak for it first or no? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Keller Johnson. I'm here. Mr. Johnson, uh, is there anything you'd like to add? You know, the only thing that I'm concerned with is we have, you know, everything finished on the west side, the three buildings, the six units, and as far as they are, one story. The other lot across the street's a little smaller. I'm a little concerned uh, the square footage to be able to get the size that I want and not be too story. I'm just, I don't know about that. I think it'd be okay, but that, that's my only concern about any of that. That's when, I didn't know that was going to be a request, I guess. Okay. But Let's I will, let me say this. I do prefer them to be one story if I can make that work on the other, the other two buildings. How many buildings are you planning on putting there? 10? It'd, be, it'd be three on one side and two on the other. So five total buildings, total. 10 units. 10 units, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So as you enter Princeton Drive, there on the left, what would be there? Well, the front of the left would be commercial across from the other commercial building that I own. And then as you, uh, about the second half of it would be the two buildings that you're seeing on lot 29B. Uh, again, I, I'm sure that the one story, I mean, I'm sitting there looking at the prints, they look uh, the same, but we, I just hadn't seen it till the prints for 29B yet, but that was a next year project. What's the, what's the minimum square foot, foot as you were trying to create? Yeah, around 1,600, 1,600 to 1,800 per side. Per unit? Oh yeah, per side, okay. Per side, see, I think, uh, Levi, do you, I don't have that plan in front of me, uh, but in around 1,600 square feet per unit. That's correct. Okay. 
So we, if we were to impose the approval with that condition on there for it being a one story unit on the side that you're concerned with, would you be able to reduce that to one townhome instead of having the two total of four or are you going to just modify the square footage? I'd have to modify the square footage. I couldn't justify the cost of that lot for one unit. For just one, for one unit. building. No, it wouldn't work. Okay. Again, I'm 95% sure that, that lot 29B will will work fine as one story. I just you just had a two-story in mind for that side. I'm, I did not have a two-story in mind. I just want to be sure that I can get the square footage, and uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, let's. I guess. Do we have any other um, anyone else to speak in favor? I know it kind of sounded like one of those were in favor. <clears throat> Any other opposition other than the ones that Levi read off? Okay, now let's bring it back into commission for discussion. Well, it sounds like the POA would prefer that uh, pending the one story and if the applicant is okay with that, I don't see any issues with, with the approval. I agree with you 100 percent and i think the, the conditions here are in alignment with the style um and the aesthetic of the neighborhood which has been done very nicely uh, and i would agree i think the kind of transition from the commercial to uh, some light density multifamily um before it gets to the single family makes sense i agree thank you well, let's move to approval then. If, if I think second, with the with the stated conditions. Correct. Second. Okay, so Delinsa, do you want to make that motion? Yes, um, I re I approve. I, excuse me. I recommend the approval of the modification from the current zoning for the PUD to the proposed zoning with the uh, with the stated um, conditions included. Excellent. Thank you. And That's we've got a that. second from Drew. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye as well. Any abstain or any opposition? All right. Very good. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now let's move. This looks familiar to last month. A request for conditional use permit uh, for a tattoo parlor in C2. Mosquito. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good evening again. So the applicant is asking for a conditional use permit to have a tattoo parlor there in the property at 2585 Donaghy Avenue. Uh, the property is zone C2. Uh, that development is part of a multi-building neighborhood commercial development that the conditional use permit will only apply to the one building there. Um, the property is surrounded by other commercial and office and multifamily use. Um, the tattoo parlor, as with last month, um, with, will likely generate less traffic than other more intense uses that are located in that same building, such as the restaurant and the nail salon. Uh, the, own, the business owner has indicated that operating hours will be Tuesday through Thursday noon to 8 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from noon to 10 p.m. Um, the conditions suggested for the conditional use permit are they included in your report with the one addition um, services to be offered. They will also be selling body jewelry, which was an addition from what we looked at last month at a different location. But that's pretty much it. Okay. I'm curious, is this the same tenant just looking at another um, space or, well, and I guess I we think could... that this is a separate, this is a separate, okay. a different one. Okay. So if it's already zoned neighborhood commercial, why do they need a conditional use for a tattoo parlor? Is that not commercial? Uh, because it's C2, right? Right. It's not permitted by right in C2, only by conditional use permit. Okay. Thank you. And uh, this would be um, 
if this is granted, this permit is only for that location only, correct? Is that what you were saying? Bill? It's only for that building in this yep. whole development, correct? Okay. Hey, uh, Beth, outside of the retail sales of body jewelry, are the other four services that are listed under number five the exact same from the other, from last month's yes. request? Okay. Yes, we confirmed that with the business owner. Okay, just curious. Brandon, this is this is Talon. I can answer any questions as well. I'm with Thank the you, Talon. I was about yes. to introduce you. Um, so I saw you your name pop up on the screen. Did you have anything you wanted to add in addition to what Beth stated in the report? Well, just to clear up um, what Beth said, it, correct. Our potential tenant is not the same person, but all the everything that we're asking uh, that the staff recommended is the same uh, except for the selling of the body jewelry um, which we didn't see that being an issue since they are providing uh, piercings there as well um, and as far as the staff recommendations go on the hours of operation um, they are tuesday through thursday noon to eight and friday and saturday noon to ten commissioners any Additional questions for the applicant? Okay. Are those coded hours, meaning that they will be out of there by that closing time? Correct. Their hours, their hours of operation, the potential tenant said their hours of operations would be between those hours. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anybody online to speak in opposition of this request? Okay. Commissioners, any further discussion needed? No, I think we're ready to make a motion. Excellent. I'd love to entertain it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to request the approval of the current zoning request. Uh, Second. Uh, conditional use, I'm sorry, conditional use to allow a tattoo parlor, parlor with the stated conditions included. All right, we have a motion from Delencia and a second from Rebecca. <laughs> sorry, Although, Delencia, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was trying to beat Drew on the second. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's yeah, been a I, I race to the finish. He was ready. ready. He pushed on mute. We were yeah. racing for it. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I was. <laughs> That's great. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Very good. Motion passes 7 0. Now, who was that second by? By Rebecca. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Houston. All right. That is the end of the items on our agenda tonight, unless anyone has anything else they would like to discuss. Seeing that there is none, I'll be ready to adjourn if you all are. All right. Well, I'll step in and make a motion to it. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Aye. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.